Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my Eclipse Shortcuts video. Today, I'm going to show you all of the Eclipse Shortcuts that I use all of the time. And the reason why I'm doing this is you guys have requested that I do this for quite some time, so today I'm going to do it. And I'm going to cover both the autocomplete shortcuts as well as the keystroke shortcuts. And I'm also going to cover what exactly you do with both Mac as well as Windows. The Mac shortcut will be across the top, and the Windows shortcut will be across the bottom. And in the description below, I'm going to provide a cheat sheet of sorts so that you can see everything all on one page if you're at all interested in that. Now, the very first thing I want to do is go over the weird Mac symbols. Now, remember, I'm going to cover the Windows part of how to do this with Eclipse, but I need to cover this for the Mac people out there. A lot of Mac people do not know what these weird symbols are, and they show up all of the time. If you ever see this flower symbol, that is exactly the same as Command, or sometimes the Apple key, depending upon how old your keyboard is. This carrot here is Control. This weird, frowny-faced, strange-looking thing here means either Option or Alt. And this arrow pointing up means the shift key. So that's just a quick review, and I have a little lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, here I am in Eclipse, and what I'm going to do here first is cover something that I do all of the time. Let's say that we have a couple fields inside of here, and they are going to be name and address. And I want to generate getters and setters with this guy. I do this all the time, so I thought I'd cover it first. Just quickly go into Source, come down here, and go Generate Getters and Setters, and hit Enter. Then this little window is going to pop up right here. You can select which ones you want to use. You can then come down here and pick the insertion point after address works for me. You can also define whether you want the setters first or the getters first. You can also define the access modifier for those, and then hit OK. And there you can see, easy enough, you just generated that and saved yourself a whole bunch of time. Well, another thing you might want to do is go into Source again, then come down here to Generate Constructor using Fields. Then you're going to be able to initialize all of your different fields in a constructor very, very quickly. You can define where you want it to show up. I'm going to put it after the set address method. Define the access modifier and hit OK. And there you can see right down here we just generated our constructor. So that saves an immense amount of time. And you could also save that as a keystroke little shortcut if you'd like to. And I'm going to show you how to do that here in a second. The only other thing I could think you might want to do up here that is related to this is go source. Come down here, and also you can generate a toString method. And this, of course, is going to allow us to define exactly what prints out if somebody tries to print the object. And here's just the fields in a nice little organized manner. You can define exactly where you want that to show up after the constructor, a whole bunch of other different things. I'm going to hit OK. And then you can see down here exactly what that toString method would look like if you would come in here and create it. So that's pretty useful. Now let's jump in and look at some different shortcuts we can use to show the shortcuts that we have available to us on screen. Now if you're on a Mac, you would just hold down Command or the little flower looking thing, Shift and L, and on the right side of your screen you're going to see a whole bunch of shortcuts. If you're on Windows, hit Control Shift L. Get exactly the same thing. And there you can see all of those different key shortcuts right there available to you on our screen, which is very nice and useful. Another thing you can do is if you want to change these different shortcuts available to you. There's actually two different ways. Since we're on a Mac, I'm going to go to Eclipse and Preferences. If you're on Windows, you're going to click on Windows and Preferences. And then inside of this guy, you're going to be able to define what are known as the autocomplete shortcuts. One you guys all seem to know about is SysOut, which is right there, which automatically is going to generate the print line command on the screen. And to get to it, you're just going to go into Java, then you're going to go into Editor, and then you're going to go into Templates. And this is going to allow you to come in here and actually create your own little shortcuts, which I'm actually going to do here in a minute. So that is how to create or generate or make your own autocomplete shortcuts. And the next thing is all the keystroke shortcuts. We're going to go into Preferences, just like before. And in this situation, we're going to go General, and then come down here and click on Keys. And this is going to be all of the key shortcuts that are going to be available to you and also how to make your own. And I'm going to show you here in a minute exactly how to do that. Well, one shortcut everyone seems to know about, or a lot anyway, is if we want to create a main function. We're just going to type in main, then we're going to hit control space, and then hit enter. And there we go, we just created that guy. And if you're on Windows, exactly the same, control space, enter. 
Now if I want to come in here and create a method that is public, I can just type in public, control space, and then enter. And there we go, we just created that. Then, uh, real easy, I can just keep on typing. I can type in my return type, hit tab, and then give it a random name, right like that. So pretty easy, nice and quick. If I want that method to be private, I just type in private, control space, again. We could also come in here and define if it's a private static method. There's a couple other different options that are available there for us. But I'm just going to hit enter. And again, I'm going to type in void. And then I'm going to hit tab. And then I'm going to type in random name too. So real easy, quick ways to generate methods. Another thing, if you wanted to actually go in here and use a name for your method, you can type most anything. I'm going to type in do stuff, hit control, space. Then you're going to see down here, if you can't see that, it says do stuff, and it's going to return type of void, and then print out the rest of the method stub. Again, control space, and then hit enter. And there we just created ourselves a private method called do stuff. So that's kind of cool. I'm actually going to be doing a lot of the stuff in the do stuff method here. I'm going to clear these guys out of here because I don't think we need that right now. And then inside of main, I'm just going to go do stuff and call this guy. But, and I'm also going to come in here and actually make this static. All right, now that we have all of that defined, sysout, which a lot of people seem to know about, again, control space, system out print line, pretty easy to generate a print line statement that way. It's also possible to generate four different types of for loops by just typing in for, control space, right like that. And then you can generate a for loop that iterates over an array, iterate over an array with a temporary variable, iterate over a collection, and also you could jump to for each, which actually has its own little shortcut, which we're going to look at in here in a second. And the other thing that's really neat is it actually shows you the code that is going to be generated if you pick on any of these different little guys here. So that's kind of cool. And I'm just going to stick with this one. And there we go. We just created all of those different pieces. And another thing that's neat is everything is tabbable again. So I can jump, like if I type in J, and you saw everything updated there, which is kind of cool. I can type in tab and I can actually give my array a name just by clicking on tab. Of course I don't have the array defined. Array type again, array element, and that is really cool. So that's a neat way to generate for loops, a whole bunch of different for loops actually. And like I said before, you could also generate a for each, just like that, control space. I mean, it's just so easy. Like, look how easy that is. And everything's generated there for you as well. While loop, I'm sure you can guess, is just while, control space. And then there's a whole bunch of different options that are available to you if you want to use different types of while loops. And there's just the generic one. And again, you can see that it automatically highlights the condition, which means you're gonna be able to jump in there and type that condition immediately, which is very, very, very useful. Want to generate a try catch block, just type in try, base, there we go, automatically jumped in there and you're going to be able to automatically start typing in your exception. Again, speeds up and makes things very, very easy. And if you want to create a comment, this is sort of a silly sort of thing, you can hit command like that and it's automatically going to generate those little comments and if you're on a Windows PC it's going to be control forward slash. If you want things to be properly indented like this currently is not. But this is going to work for all selectable code. So let's just say, let's just mess all this up on purpose. Okay, so we went and messed all that up. We're going to select all of it. Now what I'm going to do is hit Command I, and you can see it automatically went back into place. And if you're on a Windows PC, Control I. So anytime I say Command, that means Control normally if you're on Windows. You could also, let's like undo that. You can also come in here and fix sorting. And how that is different is, you know, I'm just going to type in a random comment. And let's come in here and actually select that and then hit Command I. Well, you're going to see that everything's sorted out there, but there's this weird area here where there's all this extra space. Well, if you want to actually not only indent everything properly, but also format it in a nice looking way, I'm just going to do a select all and a Command Shift F, and that is going to format everything. Again, if you're on Windows, it's Control Shift F. Of course, if you want to find or replace or do either one, it's going to be Command F or Control F, and that's going to make it very easy for you to come in here and find and replace anything inside of your code, which is useful. And let's say that I also want to come in here. I'm actually going to get this system out print line, and I'm going to say I inside of here. Let's say that I wanted to surround this print line statement with a while loop. How would I do that? It's actually very easy. Just highlight all the code that you want surrounded with a while loop, for example. 
and then you're going to hold down Alt, Command, and Z, and it's going to give you all of these different options for things that you can surround this code with. And one of those options is a while loop, and I hit that, and we're going to be able to come in here and say while I is less than 10, just like that, and then we can come in and go int I, right like that, and then at the end here, increment this guy, right like that, and give it a dummy value, right like that. Actually, let's go in here and actually not do that, and let the error come up. You're going to see these little marks over here, and if we put our hand over it, it says cannot be resolved to a variable. Well, if we click on that, you're going to see create local variable i, and boom, automatically created that for me, but it's going to give me another error message here, see? And now we're going to initialize the variable, and now it's set for zero, and it automatically fixed itself. I mean, I'm sure everybody knows that to use Eclipse for any period of time, but just thought I would go over it just because it was right in front of my face. Now, another thing that's really useful, now that we have all this generated, is if we want to extract the method into its own method. And we would do this any time that we would have code that we're going to be using over and over and over again. Now to extract it to its own method, it's going to be really easy. We're just, we're just going to highlight all the code that we want to be extracted. And then we're going to go Alt, Command, and M for extract method. Give it a name. I'm just going to call it print stuff, right like that. I'm going to let it be set as private. All fine. And hit OK and now it called for this method and automatically generated all that code out into an outside method. Again, extremely, extremely useful. And if you want to extract methods on a Windows PC, it's Alt-Shift-M. Now that we have all of this code lined up here, let's say you wanted to take this method and move it up inside of the class for some reason. Another thing you can do real easy, just select all the code that you want to be moving around, hold down your Alt key, and then you can either press up, and you can see how it's moving around inside of there, or you can press down to move it inside of the class area and everything's going to automatically adjust inside of there which is kind of cool again if you want to delete the current line of course command d or control d if you're on windows and undo is going to be command z we can also display all references of a selection so let's say that we want to show all references every line of code that contains i well that's actually going to show up down here pull this up inside of there and we're going to hit command shift u and you can see down inside of here that it is going to show all of the different lines of code that have that variable inside of it so that's really neat and if you're on windows that is going to be control shift u instead of command shift u and let's say we came in here and let's just change the value of that to one and then let's go up here to something else that's not really important if we wanted to go back we're like whoops i made a mistake when i made that edit i want to go back to that edit real easy we're just going to hit control q and there we are right back where we started at and if you're on windows you're going to hit alt left another thing that a lot of people never think about are breadcrumbs let's come up here and click on this guy if you do, it's going to, now in this situation, it doesn't really matter, but in some situations where you have a lot of methods, you want to bounce from one method to the other, well, it's going to be really easy. We can just come in here and jump to the print stuff like this, or we can jump to do stuff, and it's going to bounce all over the place and take us very quickly throughout our entire class. So that's breadcrumbs, and you get that with this little C here with the little triangle next to it. Another thing, let's say that I am writing some code and I don't finish it and I want to make a note to myself that it's something I need to fix. Well, one thing you're going to want to do is open up Tasks, which is down here. And to get to Tasks, you can go Window, Show View, and then this is going to show you a whole bunch of different panels you can put on your Eclipse console. One of them is tasks. So you just select that. And what's cool is if you make a comment inside of here and start it off with to do and then write yourself a message, I need to fix this and save it, automatically I need to fix this shows up down inside of this little task panel. And of course you can write a more detailed message than that. Now if you want to create your own Eclipse shortcut, we talked about this previously. Again, we're just going to come up to Eclipse and we're going to go preferences. And then we're going to go General and Keys, which is exactly where I am right now. Now let's say that I want to come in here and change the way that Run works, which is a shortcut that actually doesn't work by default inside of a Mac. Well, I'm just going to cycle through here until I find Run. And here we are, right where it says Inside of Windows. 
Well, now that I have that selected, I'm going to be able to change it, which is really neat. You can see right here, it has Shift and then Flower or Command and F11. Well, if I want to change this guy, I'm going to go Shift, Command, and F6. I like that. And there's a whole bunch of other different things. You can put like a description of what it's doing and other different things like that. And if there's a conflict of some sort, it's going to show up inside of here, meaning that by making this new shortcut, you're messing up another shortcut. And then hit OK. And that is going to allow you to go in there and actually change or actually create your own type of keystroke shortcut. Another thing I use all of the time, just thought of it, let's say that I decided I don't like the name of this variable, i, right here. I don't actually have this shortcut set up, but I use this all the time. I just select the variable that I name that I want to change, go to refactor, and then go into rename and select that. And the neat thing is I can actually come in here and change the name for multiple different variables all at one time. I'm just going to type in integer one, and you can see all those changed all at once. And then the final thing I'm going to show you how to do, which is really kind of neat, is let's say that I wanted to automatically generate code. Now, whenever you're creating Android apps, you're going to do things like create the on create method, on create options menu, and things like that all of the time. Wouldn't it be cool if I could actually come in here and just type in on create options menu, hit control space, and it would automatically print that? Well, I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to select and copy that code that I want to automatically show up and create for myself an autocomplete shortcut that's going to be personal for my own taste. So I'm going to go into preferences, close the general little area, and instead go into Java, come down inside of here to editor and templates. And here we are now we can create our own autocomplete shortcuts. And to do so we're just going to go new, pretty easy, and I'm going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it on create menu for now. I can type in a description here just going to type in generates menu code. I'm going to delete this in a second. So automatically insert means that I won't have to hit enter after I hit control and space. I'm just going to leave it that way. And I'm going to paste inside of here all of the code I want generated. And then I'm going to hit OK. Now I can come in here, just create my own little guy on create menu like that. Control space on create menu. And there it went and created all that. So those are all of the shortcuts that I use all of the time inside of Eclipse. I hope that helps you guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, till next time.